Mocha, Alabama. I know Miss Ivy because we were online together. Get what's up? All of a sudden, don't make me start stretching. <laughs> I do a whole bunch of stuff. Now, somebody said they wanted to be an OBGYN. I wanted to do that too. I used to pretend to be pregnant when I was little. So was <laughs> my sister would be my patient, and I would like give birth to our teddy bears. I'd be like, come on, let's go. Push that baby out. And then when I realized what I had to do every day and look at it every day, I was like, oh, this is for me. God, let's, let's figure something else out, Jesus. And so then I went through high school, and I always liked to write. I would always write poetry, and I took creative writing classes. And I said, you know what? In my high school memory book, I wrote that I was going to be a psychologist. I was going to work in the ministry. I was going to get married. This is by 25, of course. <laughs> um, I had two children. My husband was going to be real cute. And I was going to make a whole lot of money. 70% of that did not happen, OK? <laughs> I'm still waiting. Come on. Um, but I have a great fulfilling life. And what I want to convey to you is that your journey is going to do all kinds of twists and turns. You absolutely should have an idea of what you want to do and a plan. But understand that life is life and it's unpredictable. And you got to be willing to go with the ebb and flow of the different changes that you're going to experience. Okay? I got to college. I went to Tulu College. I got to college. I said, okay, I'm going to be a psychology major. Yes. I took a psychology class. I said, this is boring. <laughs> you don't like this. <laughs> no. My dad was paying for college. He said, you got to read up. I said, okay. I went to mass communications because I always like to talk. I went in there and they started talking about the history of the radio. I said, this <laughs> is boring. <laughs> I'm going to do this here. This is whack. I wanted to be Oprah. Oprah don't know about the history of the radio. Who cares about that? So I, I stopped at this woman. Her name is Dr. Candace Love Jackson. She's about this little. She walked over to me and she said, Japan, do you need something? Come on over to the English department. writing class and I took uh, British literature and it changed my life. I was introduced to Jane Austen and I finally understood Shakespeare for the first time in my life. I was like, Shakespeare is a whole boy, okay then. <laughs> right? And I started taking all these classes and performing in all these different plays and I realized I think I want to do this. This didn't have a name yet, but I was like, I want to do whatever this is. <laughs> so I majored in English with an emphasis of creative writing. Very generic degree. Junior year, I go to my advisor's house. She got five cats. I'm allergic. It didn't even matter. I was crying and sneezing all at the same time. <laughs> and I was like, I don't want to go back home to my mother's house and work at JCP. <laughs> what am I going to do? You know, I'm having a for real meltdown. And she says, You're not going to go work at JCP. And you're not going to sleep on your mom's couch. You're going to be okay. She says, We're going to make sure you're okay. So, senior year, she introduces me to uh, this organization that's called ERDA, and it's where all these graduate schools and undergraduate schools come together that offer arts degrees, like performance, acting, dancing, music, visual art. You can get degrees in this. And so Tulu College had a relationship with Brown University, and I contacted Brown, and I said, hey, I want to audition for your um, a theater graduate program. I had no real theater training. I just was in a bunch of plays, and I was just me, right? Okay, so I don't, never wrote a play before. I ain't got no money. I ain't got no that English degree. I ain't got no money. But the Tulu Alumni Association found out that I wanted to go an audition, and they bought me a plane ticket. Got to the got to Chicago, and the Tulu Alumni Association Chicago chapter made sure I had somewhere to stay and food to eat. I was walking on campus. And Man, we heard you about to go audition, bro. You go twenty dollars, man. Yeah, bro. Man, do your thing, man. You believe it? I'm like, man, all right, come in. I had about one hundred twenty dollars in cash. I got on that plane and I went to Chicago and I went and I auditioned for Brown University. And I saw all these white people doing weird things. <laughs> they were like warming up. They were like, ooh, shaking us off. Like, what is wrong with them? <laughs> August Wilson piece. If you don't know who August Wilson is, I suggest you find out who he is. He's called, like, he's like our black Shakespeare. He writes a bunch of plays. Well, he's dead now. So he wrote a bunch of plays about black people. And then I did me a Shakespeare piece. 
And they said, oh, okay, great, that's nice. We'll be in touch. Call for you ain't getting in, girl. <laughs> and so my mom's sister, Jasmine Hughes, called me. She said, hey, girl, Erna, which is that organization, is in Chicago. And if you didn't sign up for Erna, it's okay, because a couple of schools are going to do open auditions. I said, okay, I'm going to do the same audition. I got me a taxi. I feel like Carrie Bradshaw was sexy. I'm like, taxi. This is before we were y'all. Taxi. Got in the taxi. Got to the other um, hotel. I auditioned for three schools. Florida Atlantic University, LSU, and Brandeis University. I got all three with a full scholarship. Wow. I didn't get around. Of course, I got an offer. And so I decided, I said, okay, I want to be famous and a celebrity, and Brandeis is in Boston, and Boston's two hours from New York. I'm going to go to Brandeis. I went to Brandeis, and I got my Master's of Fine Arts in acting. Um, a couple of things. You would think I had a plan then, right? Yeah. No plan. Jesus. <laughs> ten people. They chose ten people for three years. They do auditions all across the country, and they only change, uh, choose ten people. I was one of the ten, and I was the only black girl. Mm -hmm. There were seven white people. Am I doing that right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Seven white people. Uh, two black boys. One was from London, so that's a different black <laughs> You ain't from America, bro. This is a different round. And then there was another guy who's from Alabama, so he was kind of like the same. He's a dude, so it's different. So, you know. mm -hmm. And I went through all sorts of changes. This is the first time I am the true minority. I went to a black school all my life, just black, 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 black. And now they're like, oh, well, we don't really know what to do with your hair. It's so, is it, is it always like this? <laughs> Or they never had my makeup for shows, or they never had my hair. And I was very insecure. Because again, I told you I didn't have any training. I got in with my pure talent. What I want to convey to you is that ultimately God had a plan. Because I was the only black girl, I was the only one from the projects, the only one from a single parent household, okay? The only one from deep, 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 very south. But I was the only one who booked a syndicated television show right out of school. And I was on ABC. There was a show called Body of Proof on season two. Go ahead and get that. Oh, come on, somebody. Um, <laughs> get checked. Go and get that. No, on we and we were two thousand nine dollars. This cool. I still use for Chick Fil A. <laughs> but I was. I we all went to the audition. It was a big deal. And I went to this audition. And I didn't really want to go. I didn't even comb my hair that day. I just wrapped a little wrap on it. You know what I'm saying? I had lip gloss. And my teacher was like, "Everybody got to go to audition. You have to go." All my classmates are white. I can't borrow your foundation. <laughs> I said, Samantha, can I use some of your eyeliner? Because that's all I can do. <laughs> Go to the audition, and the lady, she's like, okay, here's your size. And I'm reading, I'm like, okay, I can do it. Wait, she, she Jamaican? I have to be Jamaican? <laughs> yeah. And they give you two minutes to get it, get it together. Oh, it's it's your turn. Turn. You got to get it. It ain't that much, but it's about that much. It's like a little paragraph, or maybe it's a couple of lines. It depends on what you're auditioning for. And you got to get it right in. You got maybe two, three minutes. And I was supposed to do maybe, and I was like, uh, you don't know Miss Cleo, but Miss Cleo used to come on TV. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I tell you, it's so bad. It's so bad. So I go in there, and she got us lined up. They call it cow call, because it's like cows. <laughs> and they have you lined up, and she went down the road, one by one. And each person had to say their little piece. And there was a table like this, and she had her two assistants, and she was like this big white woman with a raspy voice. You could tell she was smoking cigarettes. And she was like, I'm oh, okay, the right hand is going to be here. And I'm like, that's how she talks. She's in Boston. And so I was shaking in my boots trying to say these lines. And then she stops and she points at people. She says, You, 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 and you. Thank you, you can go. She didn't point at me. I was still standing there. I was like, Okay. All right, so she went down the line. She says, you, your hair sucks. Fix it. Come back on Friday. And you, you need to do this. And she got to me. She says, you, I like your look. Your accent sucks. Fix it. Come back on Friday. I went. I was like, mom, she said my accent sucks. She's not coming on Friday. I got back on Friday, and I practiced that accent. I booked that job. I made more money in three days than I never made it Six months. <laughs> and I was like, Jesus, that's how much y'all get paid? And I ain't even the star. <laughs> okay. And do you think I had a plan then? No. Not a plan. Graduated with a degree. I was like, God, what am I going to do? And 
I decided to move back to Mississippi, I taught in public school for five years. I taught theater arts at a, a performing arts school. After that, I was like, this is, I'm done. I quit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this no more. Y'all can y'all can kick me enough. Sure, and call me a couple names and be done with it. How pow, it's over. And I decided to leave. And I became the director of theater arts at Bell State Community College. Think I had a plan? No, no. Got laid off. Mm -hmm. Oh. The college was over budget. So all 19 professors were cut. And I found myself. What am I trying to communicate to you? Life happens. It's a journey. Yes, yes. And you got a plan, but I'm going to tell you, your plan will have to be just. But as long as you're open to what God is doing in your life, you're going to be okay. And as long as you trust, you're going to be okay. I am Mr. Hill. I know you can tell. <laughs> I eat. So ask me what I'm doing now. I'll tell you. <laughs> I am a published author. I wrote a book called I Have Something to Say. Awesome. I also am graduating with my counseling degree this spring. So I wanted to tell you that you can have the traditional trajectory plan. I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to be a nurse, I'm going to be a lawyer. And those are great because I need a lawyer. Okay? I definitely need a doctor. <laughs> Always. I'm going to need a nurse too. They've got a makeup artist in the room. We all need these people. The project manager, I need her too. She, she deals with $10 million a day. I need that too. But there is not one day I wake up and hate what I do. I love what I do. I love talking to you. This is fun for me. Writing this book, promoting this book, counseling young people, teaching performing arts is amazing to me. And so I'm never broke. And I'm never hungry and I'm never unhappy because I really do what makes me happy on the inside. And that's what life's about, is doing what makes you happy. You can think about it extrinsically or internally. What's going to give you the most value? Yes, you can have a beautiful house, big pretty house, couple cars, okay? And be immensely unhappy. Come on, talk about it. Or you can have a more humble lifestyle and be super happy. So you gotta think about what kind of life you want, what kind of things you truly enjoy. And if that Gucci and that Louis gives you value inside, oh, I'm not knocking it, do you, girl? But I'm telling you, when you go to work every day, you're gonna wanna feel good, not dread it, because that is going to make for a very miserable lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Questions?